Hello, everybody. All right. We're back for another X Novel mod discussion with Cecilia. This, this special hello. Those got voted in. Oh, the oh yeah, the the the, the, the 42nd hello. <laughs> yeah. Hello. Um, maybe we'll get to that. This is gonna be a brief combo with Cecilia today. I thought we'd have Cecilia on because we've been discussing on uh, my channel a lot about persistency. If you're unfamiliar with Cecilia Hendricks, she's got a great YouTube channel and podcast and uh, her moniker, moniker, is that the right word? Unleashing <laughs> Happiness is the name of, of uh, Cecilia's, um, well, the name of your podcast, right? And your YouTube channel? And YouTube, yeah. Yeah. Um, Unleashing Happiness, Cecilia explains, ex Cecilia was the, I would call her the chief uh, Neville subreddit moderator for, for a while and um, explains Neville's philosophy and approach better than, than most, and certainly more uniquely than most. Um, you can look at some of our previous conversations. I'll put the link below and above. Um, but I thought that I would have her on um, just to briefly discuss a little bit about persistency um, and what that means to her, what that meant perhaps to Neville, and just how we can more successfully persist in the wanted state, the desired fulfilled state, as opposed to the undesired state. Because inadvertently, almost all of us, at least from time to time, tend to hang out and persist in the unwanted state as opposed to the fulfilled desired state. So Cecilia, thanks again for joining us. And um, yeah, I'm just just curious your initial take on what we've been talking about recently in terms of persistence and states. Yeah, so one, I have to say, I so I'm always watching your content as well. And I have recently noticed the persistency conversation. And I was like, holy cow, that's absolutely amazing. I think it's a spot where people don't realize or they don't want to be honest in what they're persisting in. And a lot of times, um, and I know I did this for myself, where I would think that I was persisting in a state that I wanted and you can be using like affirmations or trying to use like a certain technique against, you know, a state, but if you're using it against what you don't want, and this is what Neville talks about, you're really just confirming to yourself that it's still there. So you're more focusing on a problem instead of persisting in like what you said, the wanted state, like your desired outcome, result, whatever you want to call it. Um, and I find this even with folks that I talk to. Uh, and one of the things that I notice, and I don't know if you have as well, but I can explain it to somebody and say, well, you know, are you considering like really where your focus is? And it's not about not talking about it, right? Like I hate when people are like, well, you're not allowed to talk about the conditions because, well, no, if you're still thinking about them, you talking about them is not going to change what state you're dwelling in, right? So if you're still looking at it as this like problem that you want to talk about and you need to talk about these conditions and you want to spit that out, well, that's the state that you're dwelling in. That's actually where you're persisting, where I have found the things that I've been able to shift my desire to talk about them is in a whole new light. So if I was looking, you know, for an example, like, well, you know, the SP stuff that I know you've been doing a lot in lately, if I want to tell somebody, well, you know, I keep saying that he's obsessed with me, but every time that I open my phone, I'm still blocked on Snapchat. Okay. Well, you saying that out loud is not making it more real than your feeling already was. Like you're still persisting in that. Um, and when I have that conversation with people, they want to tell me that I'm wrong. No, I'm not persisting in that. I'm saying over and over that he's obsessed with me, but that's the need to do that. The need to check if you're unblocked on Snapchat, the need to obsessively tell yourself that someone else is obsessed with you is not you persisting in being in like a loving type of relationship. I don't know if that makes sense. It makes complete sense. And I think it's something that is really sneaky and tricky mm -hmm. um, where we are so prone to be like outwardly, oh, I'm persisting, I'm, I'm doing a good job, I'm doing the technique or I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, you know, going to the end with this. While if we're honest with ourselves, a lot of the time, we'll be like, oh, well, my behavior, my reactions are not in line with right. that, that state of things being okay, things having worked out, things going to work out. 
that sense of um, relief, you know, which I often like to talk about that, that like Neville talked about, you know, you, you're relieved when you have what you want in a way, a lot of the yeah. time. And a good question we can ask ourselves is like how, you know, what was, was my level of like relief and um, of, of feeling relaxed, um, you know, as I went through my day, because if you're more relaxed, you're accessing that state of fulfillment and that you're persisting more in a, in a state of like, well, things have already come to me inwardly and they're going to come to me outwardly and everything's okay. While persisting in a state of frustration or a state of checking or worrying about what's going to happen, obviously are, are nothing like that. They're, they're two very different ways of, of living your life kind of by, you know, by default. And I, I think that almost all of us, you know, we, we get stuck living this more worrisome and anxious default um, level of, of, you know, behavior as we go through the day, even though we don't mean to. Right. And so it, it takes some serious looking, looking at in the mirror. And I think you got to do it often in order for it not to, to kind of sometimes build momentum and snowball into ugly situations that we don't want. Yeah, I had a podcast episode that I did this morning that's talking about like self-love. And I think self-love and self-care comes into play into this quite often is that the more like that you build your self-worth, the more that you're likely to kind of persist in the state of being someone who is relaxed, like what you said. And I use the question and I always recommend people ask themselves the question of, okay, how do I want to feel when I go to bed at night? So if you consider that feeling and then check with yourself, is the actions that I'm taking right now in alignment with feeling that way when I go to bed? It's a very quick way to kind of do a gut check on, to like your point, the relaxation that you're in. If I have a person that I'm you know, constantly checking their Instagram story to see if they are out with a different, you know, somebody else, a, a third party, um, that is not me persisting in the feeling that I want to be loved and cherished and desired when I go to bed tonight. Uh, and so the, the more that you can check in with yourself on that, what is my behavior like? Am I feeling anxious? Am I actually relaxed into this feeling? Am I within my like present moments or am I always seeking this external condition that needs to happen for me to be happy in the future? Uh, and I think that becomes this like cycle that I know I put myself into for, for quite a while where I was like seeking this. If I do this technique today, then in, you know, two days or 15 days or whatever, I'm going to have this external condition that will then make me feel good. Well, that moment of me doing the technique has already passed. So I'm beyond that feeling of wanting to feel good because once, even if that thing externalizes in my world, there's something else then that I don't feel good about because internally I haven't worked on what I need to and what I need to persist in and being like present in this moment and taking care of myself. Yeah, it's it's really nipping it in the bud before it before it again it snowballs or whatever language mm-hmm. you want to use. It's it's uh, fascinating how hard this can be. <laughs> I mean, I think that's yeah. that's uh, why people don't discuss it more. But this, you know, advice to just persist is very superficial unless we look at it like in, in are really considering what we're persisting in. And it, yes. yeah, like you said, bef- before bed's a great time to to do this. Obviously, you know, Neville always recommend doing something before bed for for similar reasons or these exact reasons. If you can, in the very least, kind of take stock of your state before bed and really spend some time shifting it more to your liking before you go to sleep. I think that's, that's a, that's a huge thing you can do. And before bed and when you wake up are probably the most um, conducive conducive times to, to, to do something like that, to, to really take stock of where you're at and to also kind of set you, you know, before bed to kind of set you in motion for sleep and the subconscious doing its thing. And then in the morning for, for, you know, getting ready for your day, but it's tough too, because then you're going to find yourself perhaps in the middle of the day with three different things to do. And you realize you're persisting in a state that is not conducive to what you want in your life. Right. And, you know, that's why 
we got to use whatever tools we can in my opinion to just mm-hmm. to be aware of that. And that's why, you know, it, I also thought of like our conversation and, you know, what we've often talked about with the Emmett Fox's seven day mental diet. I feel like people who are listening to this, who are like, I have no idea how to, you know, persist in a desired state or not play into my negative thinking as much. The seven day mental diet gives you a specific short term plan that will enable you to at least do that somewhat and experience it in your own life um, over a short period of time, which then can be built upon for your more normal daily life. Um, going well, forward. I haven't found for myself that, so the seven day mental diet, the first few times I did, it was a real struggle for right. me. And I put myself in a really bad spot, to be honest. And I'm guessing others out there have as well. Where it's they, like, yeah, I've, I've spoken yeah, to many where people my, in a similar, similar situation. And I always, I, re- I reference you now. My ass. <laughs> yeah. My mind definitely went on not a great, great way uh, for the first few times that I tried it. But what I did find is that I could do it in chunks each day. And that helped me out quite a bit. So if I looked at the behaviors that I had and I said, okay, well, I'm going to leave myself a sticky note on my bedside table so that when I wake up, I remember what I'm doing. So I, I wake up and I can catch my thoughts right away because really any like first initial thoughts that you have, it's like just a habit loop that you've created that you, you're falling into. And so if you grab that note, you start to take a look at it and then I would say, okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to focus on this until 10 a.m. Now, mind you, I wake up at like four o'clock in the morning. So, you know, from then to 10 a.m. is a good stretch of time. Then when I hit 10 a.m., I could say, okay, well, I'm going to do it from 10 to 12. I'm going to do it until I hit lunch. And I found that breaking that up into even like smaller chunks uh, helped me with the spiraling. And I also worked with um, like, you know, some emotional intelligence and regulation tools to make sure that I did not start to spiral because man, the first time, especially that I did the seven day mental diet, it went pretty poorly for me. And um, I think it's because I was also in a state that as soon as I would fall off, I would be frustrated with myself. Well, the more frustrated you get with yourself, it just kind of becomes this, this cycle, but that's what helped me. So if there's people out there who have tried to do a seven day mental diet and they're like, you know, it sounds short, but man, it kicks my butt and I'm not able to keep up with it. Uh, taking a look at it and even like smaller chunks, even an hour at a time, you yeah. can start to see some pretty drastic changes. That's great, great advice. We'll have to revisit that. Or I hope you, have you done a, a podcast episode or a video about that? Doing it, I have ch- not. chunking it. I'm sure Mm-mm. people would like to hear that because that's a great idea is to chunk it. I've given the advice before of like, yeah, just focus on like the day. Don't, don't think of yeah. it as a seven day man, but that's even better what you're saying. Like if you just feel like it's just your, your mind just gets so reactive over the course of the day. And like the idea of doing it even for a whole day seems like too much. Try to do it for an hour or two or three mm-hmm. hours and see what happens. And again, you know, I know you always, you're, you're a master talking about habit looping. You're habit looping by doing that. And right. by giving yourself that flexibility, you're, you're doing something. And, you know, reactivity is a habit loop. So how reactive we are to our thoughts is something that we can work with if we believe we can work with it. And if it involves just doing it for two hours a day, as opposed to a day or seven days, even it's something, and that's something that you can work on. I know you give the example of like getting up and then, you know, not checking your phone or, but it also could be like, well, make it a a habit to when you get up, try if you get up at 6am, try to make it till 8am before you are reactive to any negative thoughts, the way a seven day mm-hmm. mental diet is. You can just start to do that for two hours in the morning and do it for a week or longer and see what happens. I'm sure it would do something. Yeah, I think it's helpful. And then before you know it, you're like, oh, wait a minute, this is actually a little bit easier. And especially if you, you talk a lot about like Richard Dots, and especially if you pull out from Richard Dots from the 955 code, which is my favorite book so far of his. Um, but when, you take a look at what you're doing in those other moments. Like, what are you doing for yourself? What are you actually persisting in that shows that you're someone who is living this type of life that you want to live? Because if what you're doing these other times is like stressing out or, you know, online stalking somebody or panicking that they're, you know, talking to some other woman or et cetera, those times then that's, that's essentially your mental diet. That's what you're focused on. That's what you're going to keep like receiving. So really check in with yourself. Like, what can I add in these times 
that would help me become the person that I want to become or yeah. the person that I want to be who has this like thing that I want to have. Um, and this was like the biggest thing for me because I tried to do just like the Neville techniques. And I think during the day, pretty much what I did is I like took whatever seed I planted and I just squashed it and killed it um, because of where my focus would be for the rest of the time of the day. I just wasn't, I struggled to figure out how to make that work and how to make it like an actual practical way of dealing with it because my mind would want to go um, to a lot of areas that I didn't want to during the day. Yeah. I mean, and this is why I've been discussing a lot about persisting mm -hmm. and, and what it actually means, because I, I think as great as Neville is, he doesn't give at least that much advice about how to actually persist in the state throughout the day. And some, if you bring in someone like Richard Dots or, you know, even reading H. Emily Katie excerpts recently, it just gives you a different perspective. And that perspective yeah. might not be the best for everybody. And Neville's mm -hmm. advice in terms of persisting might be enough for plenty of people too. But different perspectives can help you learn how to do this um, in a way that works for you, which again is the key. I'll just say quickly, like Richard, for me, he really taught me that it's okay to just feel neutral. And yeah. like, like, in, like, I think a lot of times people are like, well, like if I'm in the fifth field state, I have to feel happy or ecstatic or something. And it, like, you know, a lot of Richard Dotz's work is like, it's like, no, you just feel like, okay, you feel neutral in a good way. And like, that's enough. Like, and if you think about that, if your state is like pretty neutral, but you feel good, you feel okay, that is entirely a different default state than feeling stressed out, entirely. Yeah. And if you can just get there more of the time, that will help your, your overall level of persistence and your external manifestations as well. So I know we have to wrap up, Cecilia. Is there anything you want to, um, to leave us with? I know you've got a course too. You've got, you have a, a new course out, correct? I do. Well, it launches next Monday. Um, awesome. so it launches on November 6th, but I do, you can find it on my website. So if you go to ceciliahendricks.com, uh, it's up in the top, create a life that you love. So yeah, I'm pretty excited about it. I realized that as I was like doing the podcast and doing the YouTube channel, so I was like, this is really great information and I like sharing it and I really love doing those processes and sharing that information with people. But I think being able to put it into like a course form that is more it's like kind of a step-by-step -step guide like here's how you can really transform um and I you know did it on a miniature type level was like a 14-day course with a small email group uh, and just like the people who did the course like the feedback that I got from it was remarkable so it was really good to hear because this is the process that I took and I took a long time to figure it out, uh, to do for myself, to start having the successes that I have now. And so it was kind of, it was fun to put it together. It was kind of fun to see the process of it, but yes. Yeah, so that launches next Monday, November 6th. That's fantastic. And yeah, I, I suggest people take, take a look at that. We'll put a link below to, to the course. Um, yeah, thank and yeah, you. I'm, I'm sure that like you said, having it laid out in a course form is going to be extremely helpful for a lot of people, because as we all know, when we go on YouTube or anywhere, there's so much stuff. And if you have someone kind of directing you in course form, um, it, it often has a much more profound effect. Yeah, Fantastic. Fantastic. Um, awesome. Well, the light, the light just showing through my window. So I guess that's I see indicating that. that we are illumined all of a sudden. <laughs> And thank you for enjoy, joining us. And any questions for Cecilia or myself, you can reach us uh, on our channels or on our websites. And um, until next time, everybody, uh, everybody be well. Bye-bye.